Hey folks, it's me, Mike Fink Dependence, and I've been absent from the blog for a little while, uh, a week or two probably. Uh, it's been crazy. I've been trying to get my uh, courses set up. I had Christmas, I was out of town, we had New Year's, we had family all over the place, uh, so it's been a little while. And for that, I apologize, loyal viewers. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that I got for the Christmas time time. Um, uh, or at least around it, that sort of stuff. Stuff you haven't seen on the blog yet. So these are things that are coming soon or just stuff that I'm going to use uh, as the, you know, as things I use. So check this out. Okay, so stuff that I've gotten recently. I uh, actually gave these to everybody. Uh, let's see, focus in there. There we go. Uh, as a, um, like a stocking stuffer. I had a couple of these and I wrapped them together and I put a little pen in there. Uh, you know, nothing super fancy, but a pen I thought somebody would like. Uh, these are Moraman pads, uh, M Memo. Let me see if I can get this to focus. I'm not used to doing this one-handed. Uh, that's me. Um, this is uh, this is a paper that I really like. It's not available in a whole lot of places around. It's uh, uh, a Japanese, of course. I got these from Jet Pens. I got a whole bunch of them. They're only lined on one side. Uh, they work pretty well with fountain pens. They're a little bit thinner, perhaps, than I expected them to be. This is one side, and then on the other side you can kind of see through it a little bit. It's not too bad, it's not actually bleeding, it's just kind of uh, showing through because it's fairly thin paper. Uh, so good, this is done with a uh, fountain pen, I think. Did I use a fountain pen for this? Uh, no, maybe I didn't, this isn't a fountain pen. Let's go ahead and write it out with a fountain pen, just for funsies. Let me find a fountain pen, there we go. What is this? I was writing on this with another pen, it was uh, one I'll show you here very soon. So, fountain pen test. All right, there we go. That was, uh, this is my Faber-Castell Basic. Uh, it's a really nice pen. I love the nib, just the grip. It tends to, like, keeps cracking on me. I don't really know why, but it frustrates the hell out of me because I really like this pen. Um, I actually don't know what ink that is. It's going to be one of these uh, Bung Box? Yeah, Bung Box Omazaki C. See, I actually have to keep lists. Here's a list of what's in what pen. Uh, these are actually the last words written with my sad Schaefer Targa that I broke the tip off of. Uh, half the time broke off. Very sad. All right, so let's look, see what it has on the other side. Uh, yeah, nothing more than the other one. The other one was written with a rollerball, and so you never know. But uh, yeah, it's still no bleed. You can see see through it, but it is, like I said, very thin paper. Uh, but it feels nice. The cover is, uh, I thought it was going to be like a plasticky sort of thing, but it's actually just a very, very heavy cardstock, but it's heavy enough. I'd stick this in the back pocket. I really like these. And they come in a bunch of different colors, so you can find these on jet pens. Uh, these are M Memos by Maraman. All right, I gave those to everybody else. <laughs> uh, let's see, what did I get? Well, some things I got. One thing I got was this. This is from my lovely wife, Audrey. You can find her uh, nail polish exploits at writeonthenail.com. This is a uh, pen wrap she got me, sort of last minute. We weren't supposed to be doing Christmas gifts, but I broke that rule. She found out about it, and so she got me some things for Christmas. Oh no, I can't do this with one hand, I guess. There we go. Okay, so this is a pen wrap. This is a Doctor Who themed pen wrap. I am a Whovian, big fan of the Doctor Who. This is a exploding TARDIS, uh, exploding TARDIS uh, pattern on this guy. And uh, you do is you fold it down, you roll it up, and then you tie it up with this little string, which is very cool. This is made by uh, Elizabeth Newton. This is uh, Sean Newton's wife, I believe. So uh, check those out. These are very nice pockets. I've got all kinds of pins in here. Uh, from this one, which is an uh, Invincia, uh, which is a fairly large pen, but even that one just disappears. Uh, these are very large uh, holes. It's my two fingers going there. So it's a pretty big, good-sized hole. I have them hooked up across the top so I can actually get to them when I need them. Come on. All right. Uh, and then, you know, smaller pens fit in there just fine, but some of them, like this Artista, is only this long. Let me back off a little bit. There we go. And then some of them are longer. And then longer, uh, this is all the way down to Franklin Kristoff's and stuff like that. So um, I actually had this wrapped up backwards just because I had it sitting on my desk. Um, and that is like this. Now I can sort of get to all the pens. Voila, like it is. And uh, there you go. So this is a very cool pen wrap. The fabric is very nice. It feels like it's sturdy. The stitching is pretty super. Let me get in there. Come on, focus. There you go. Uh, over here, you can see it better here as well. And uh, it kind of looks like, I don't know if that's a, I don't think it's a serger, but it is something pretty heavy duty. I don't think the stitching is going to come loose anytime soon. So um, good job on that, Newtons. I love those Newtons. I need to get me some, get myself a Newton pen one of these days. Uh, if you have a Newton pen, you want me to test it out and put it on the blog, I will totally do that if you loan it to me. Anyway, contact me if you want to. 
All right, so there's that. So that was spin wrap. Really like that. I'll be carrying it around for uh, quite a bit, I think. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, I didn't really get anything else in, as far as pens. Oh, this. Yeah, I got this. Uh, this is a uh, dip pen holder that my dad found. The nib is one I had sitting around, actually, because he found a bunch of little nibs. He goes to, I guess, a flea market and finds these things. But I've got, like, little bags full of nibs that he finds. So how fun is that, huh? He marked out the price. See if I can read it. I cannot. He marked it out real well. But I've got all kinds of little nibs. Uh, the thing is, I don't really do dip pens. I don't have any ink for dip pens, really. All I've got is fountain pen ink. I mean, I have a lot of those, but I don't really have any, fountain, any dip pen ink. Uh, and so it doesn't work super well. I put this nib on there because it has an overfeed. It's got this weird little underfeed thing going on. I thought this one would, be, would work pretty well. Uh, and it works kind of okay. You can write about, I don't know, two letters before it runs completely out of ink. So I, I don't know. It's a pain in the ass. I don't know how you dip, dip pen folks do it. But uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so I got this. Right, put that on the pile. Other things I've gotten recently. Uh, I got this just before Christmas hit. This is the Anderson Pens uh, Retro 51 Tornado. This is a uh, limited edition. This is number 42 out of 500. So if you want to get your hands on one of these, there are only 500 of them, uh, and these are really good. If you think that you know somebody, maybe they're a techie, maybe they're not, but they're uh, not quite ready to jump into fountain pens and they want a fancier ballpoint or rollerball, Retro 51 is the way to sucker them in because these are great pens. Uh, the uh, action up here is very smooth. There's no tip rattle at the, at the, the tip which bugs the hell out of me. I hate it when there's tip rattle. That is when you have the like the tip of the pen rattling against the outside of the case. It just bugs the hell out of me. I hate that every word rattles. Ugh. Uh, it has a nice green t uh, top on it. It's got the circuit board thing going on. Got the Anderson Pens logo secretly in there. Very cool, very cool pen. I was actually at Bertrand's, uh, Bertrand's Inkwell up in DC uh, where I was for Christmas and um, I took this in and showed it to him. He was very impressed. So, you know, there's that. He was suitably impressed, I would say. All right, so there's that. Uh, it comes in a tube. If you've never gotten a Retro 51, they come in a tube, which is pretty cool. And it says the Tornado, Retro 51, Anderson Pins up there. It's a very nice design. They did, did really nicely on this one. And then, you know, it sticks in this little hole in this foam, and it stands straight up inside this tube. So, you know, that's pretty cool. I really like that as a way to you know, get pens. I think it's fun. Also, it has uh, it's the Terabyte Tornado is what this one's called. Where's the number? Ah, oh, there it is. Number 42. It's the answer to the question. All right. I'm a big Douglas Adams fan, so that's what that was. Uh, just before Christmas, I got this. This is actually how my wife found out I was getting her something. I got her a matching uh, Ambition. This is the Faber-Castell E-Motion. I got it uh, from Staples. I got it on that really sick sale they were having a while before Christmas. Which way does it come off? Here we go. Um, this pen uh, is a little bit small this way. It barely kind of fits in my hand, but that's how I write with it most of the time. It doesn't post super well. It posts okay. Uh, if you push it on there, if I can do it one-handed, I probably should have gotten a tripod, but there we go. Yeah, it doesn't want to post. Come on. Yeah, it just doesn't post very well. I expected it to post better than it does. That's kind of okay. Uh, you don't want to, uh, yeah, it doesn't post. So, yeah, it doesn't post for beans, actually, which is fine because this cap is mega heavy. It's a very big, fat cap. Uh, but I think it looks very cool. I really like the nibs on these Faber-Castells. They're some of my favorites. Uh, and this is pear wood. Let me see if I can focus in more closely on that. Look at that nice wood grain. It's very cool. It's kind of untreated, so it's probably going to change according to my fingers. You can see the threads are very small. This is very, like, turning into a mini review. And the clip is actually spring-loaded. It does this action. I like it a lot. And I think it looks pretty interesting, just sort of uh, on the table. Focus. All right, so there we go. Screw that back on. It holds just fine when you screw it on that way, but... Yeah, so anyway, that's the E-Motion. I got Audrey a, uh, uh, an ambition. I was having her do a periscope. She's like, let's do a periscope. And I said, great, let's do a periscope. And then I had, I was like, oh yeah, I got these today. I got this, and then I got the, uh, actually this, which I haven't inked up yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to or not. Uh, I think I probably will, though. I'm not good at collecting. If I was a collector, I would leave things in their packages, but I'm not good at that. It's just the, uh... Uh, Lamy All-Star and that uh, copper orange color. I really dig that copper orange. I think it's very cool. And I got those at the same time as I got the Ambition and the Emotion. They're all on a super sale and I was like, oh yeah, I'll just uh, pretend that the uh, Ambition and the Emotion came in the same box. Or rather, the uh, this guy, the Lamy and the Emotion came in the same box. Uh, they didn't. Actually, I got both of these first and then I got this one second. So, anyway, I put them in the same box and then uh, we were on the air, and she's like, oh, this is an ambition. I'm like, and I grabbed it and took it away from her and said, nope, nope, nothing nothing to see there, nothing to see there. She kind of knew she was getting something for Christmas, but, you know, whatever. All right. Oh, oh, and I got these. 
Uh, my mom sent these to me. I haven't actually uh, opened up this back, uh, this package yet. I'm totally going to. If you're going to use a gel pen, these are really nice. I actually like them a lot better than G2s. I think G2s are kind of, um, I mean, everybody's got them and they're like very popular. There are just better gel pens out there. I mean, there are these. These uh, Zebra Saracas are very cool. Uh, I think that they dry more quickly. You don't get the blobs. I get so much blobbing with G2s. I don't know what it is. I think it's just the ink, but I don't really love G2 cartridges, and these are much better. And look at that cool selection of colors. And look at that green. That's red. I've got this sort of denimy blue. That's really nice. This one I've also used. It's just sort of a Merlot. I don't know the rest of them, so that's very cool. I'm glad that I have these. Uh, a couple of blues in there. Oh, I've got a blue-black. That's what this one is. You can't really tell. Lighting is bad. It's very getting kind of dim outside. Anyway, so there's that. I'm very excited about those for grading and whatnots. Uh, oh, I got some Exacompto uh, cards. These are... Um, Oh shucks, who makes these things? Um, Claire Fontaine makes these. So these are a variety of different colors of index cards and they have a little grid pattern on them going on. Here, I'll just take this one. Uh, and they're very thick. So I wrote this with actually like a felt tip pen. Um, let's see, where is it? This is it. This is a very, like, you know, scattershot video, whatever. This is a Pilot Bravo. It's a fiber tip. I really like that. Uh, but it also is very wet, so I think if uh, fountain pen ink was going to bleed through this, it would have bled through with just like that pen. Uh, but it did not. I was talking, I was making a video earlier, uh, and uh, those are some of the things I was talking about how to write a philosophy paper. Uh, and these are, uh, you know, no show through on the back of the cell. It's very thick, very nice. So I'm not shocked there. All right. I got some of those. I actually don't remember what they cost. Uh, Bert doesn't really price things in the store, which is. Oh, that was a little irritating, honestly, uh, but, um, you know, whatever. They weren't that much. They were index cards. I uh, also got this massive Rhodia tablet. This is, uh, let's see, which size is What size is this? This is the, uh, where's the number? Uh, hmm. I can't find the number on this silly thing. Oh, there it is, down at the bottom. Rhodia number 19. So, this one's pretty big. Um, uh, it's like legal size, I think, more or less. This is yellow, it's lined. We haven't seen any yellow uh, pads, so we got some of this. I buy Rodeo whenever I get a chance because I really like uh, Rodeo paper. I use it for all kinds of stuff. Let's see what else. Oh, also while we're at Bertram's, I got a couple of bottles of ink. We got three bottles of ink. Uh, so these two, Audrey picked out this uh, Sargasso Sea, which is a very cool blue color. Let me get these out right quick. One hand, put on box. And uh, he's got these priced at, I think, $13.50 a bottle or something like that in the store. I didn't know diamine had gone up that much. I'm going to put this down right quick. There, enjoy that view. Ugh, there we go. I didn't know diamine had gone up so fast, or so high in terms of price, but it only has. There you go, there's that color. It's a very deep blue. Sargasso C. So, got that one. She's got that in a pen. I haven't inked this one up yet, although I wrote with the one she had, and I really liked it. So, Sargasso C will be coming up eventually. That's very cool. And the other one is uh, Majestic Blue. So I did um, a pair of ink reviews recently that were uh, Bung Box's Sapphire and um, Ackerman's uh, Shocking Blue. No, no, not Bung Box Sapphire. What am I talking about? Bung Box uh, Omazaki C. And somebody said, hey, have you tried Majestic Blue? Because it looks just like that. So I uh, checked that out. I've uh, got it in a pen. I think it looks a lot different than uh, Omazaki C, honestly, and it looks a lot different than Shocking Blue from uh, Ackerman. So there you go. There's the inside. Uh, tons of sheen on this guy, I think, but not. It's not the same. It's a different, different hue than those uh, than the Ackerman. So I've heard a lot of rumors about Ackerman being reboxed, or rebranded Diamine, and I don't think it's true. And I think it would be weird if it was, and I just don't. Uh, they don't seem to match to me. But. Anyway, uh, and then I got some Schaefer Script Red. I haven't tried this one yet. I did swatch it somewhere. I'm not going to be able to put my hands on it right now. Um, oh, I will. Here it is. I just happen to have it here. All right, there we go. So here are the colors. Majestic Blue there. And there it is in the pen. This is actually written with the pen that it's in. It's very dark. This is a, very, a fairly wet pen. That's a very dark line there. And then Sargasso C, which is definitely different than Majestic Blue. And then Script Red. I have never tried Script Red before, but every time somebody says, hey, what's a good red ink? Somebody says, Schaefer Script. And I'm like, nah, I don't know. I've had like mediocre experiences with Schaefer Script. Um, but the brown was like the worst ink I ever tried when I first started getting samples. Uh, this is a blue-black Schaefer Script. 
and uh, I don't like it very much. I've only tried it once, and it was pretty, it was, like, sub-mediocre. I'm gonna try it again, though, because, I mean, you know, it's probably fine. Schaefer's good ink, right? So anyway, there it is. There's uh, Schaefer's script red. And then right below that, Montblanc Golden Yellow, which I just got from Apple Boom Pens uh, in the Netherlands, which is very cool. I'm glad they sent this out. It got a little mushed in shipping, uh, but that's what happens. So uh, this is uh, Golden Yellow. This is sort of, um, uh, I don't know if this is limited edition. I think it is, because it's in the limited edition bottle. But I mean, pink is still around, right? So it must not be that limited. Uh, this is the Golden Yellow. You can see it's got this little hat, little Montblanc hat. There you go. That's... Uh, that's it. So it's a little bit, looks like it's got some room, but I don't know, maybe it's just air bubbles or something. So anyway, there's, uh, that's that. I was not, I was prepared to not like this ink at all. Cause I mean, look at that yellow. It's, uh, it's like not quite light enough to be a highlighter, but it looked, uh, you sit over there. I can't do it with one hand, but it seems like it's totally legible here. Uh, it writes much nice, much more nicely than I thought it was going to. So here's the, here's the pen that it's in. Let's go ahead and give this a little try. Hello world. Nope. There we go. I think that's totally legible actually, and I was totally prepared not to like it, but it is like a nice goldenrod color, and uh, I dig it. So anyway, I got that. And what else did I get? Did I get anything else? Uh, looking around. Oh no! But in the theme of things that I use, uh, if you haven't tried out plum plum paper, you might try out these planners. They're very cool. Um, I got this from my wife for my birthday. She got me two. Come on, focus. There we go, finally. Uh, you can see it's you know this size. It's a nice kind of, uh, it's not quite square, I guess. Uh, I put the stickers on there. It doesn't come with Doctor Who stuff on it. That was my, uh, also doesn't come with a Word notebook sticker, but I put that on there too. It's got a nice plastic cover, and it's got a heavy, heavy cardstock sort of uh, that, uh, well, inner cover, and it's got plum paper. You can find these on, I believe she got it on Etsy. So check these guys out. Um, it's got lots of different setups. This is actually the student planner. And it's the six month guy. Uh, and it works like this. So let's see, I'll go to a, here we go. Um, and I got these little inserts also off of Etsy in different places. Um, but I've got my classes here and then I've got, you know, what's going on each day and it's got a place for tests. It's got weekly lists like setup to a one and all this sort of thing. So actually, I'll check out a couple, check off a couple of things because that's fun. So uh, I've actually set this one up. Yay for philosophy two hundred one and two hundred one A B eleven. Not quite uh, one twenty one. Set up three sixty one. Ooh, haven't even looked at that one yet. Classes start on Monday, so I got a lot of work to do. That's why I've been a little frazzled. So anyway, this is uh, this has gone a little bit longer than I perhaps was going to, but um, do check these out. They're very good for fountain pens. I'll show you the back. Um, you definitely you can't even see through it. Now, one thing about these is that they do tend to uh, take a little while to dry, just because the paper is so is so tough. So I got this fun old piece of blotter paper in a package from Anderson Pens. Uh, they just put it in. I think they got these and they were putting it with the next you know several orders or something until they ran out. So they sent. I got one with an order. I happened to send it at the right time. So uh, it's blotter paper on the back, like a picture postcard type thing on the front. Catch them, Gramp. <laughs> I really like that. But also, it's great for this, because you can just put it on there and go like this, and bada bing, bada boom, done. Now you can close your book. Uh, but it's got the little, it's got a little pocket in the back. I'm going to keep this in there, so when I write stuff with a fountain pen, just stick it in there. Boom, done. Uh, I might try Hobonichi or something like that later on uh, in my career. I don't know, maybe next year. But these are like little semester ones. You can see this one only goes from February to June. I probably should have had to go till July, like the end of July, but... You know, whatever. I teach it all year round, but I forgot about that. That just means I have to get another one. Yay! So anyway, this is what I've been using. This is a uh, uh, plum paper planner. So check those out. I think they're very cool, and the prices are very reasonable. They're all kinds of different styles. Um, so check that out. Actually, I think you can customize them too. Okay, so probably you have heard me talk enough. I know I'm tired of talking, so uh, there it is. That's that. Um, that's what I've gotten recently. Those are some things that are coming up on the blog soon. And uh, I'll be back to writing reviews as soon as I can get around to it. Uh, but until then, use this to tide you over. Peace out, y'all.